Welcome to the first episode of Inside the Academy Studio. Today's conversation will be about David o. Russell's The Fighter. Well, The Fighter is a movie uh, set around two brothers, Mickey Ward and Dickie Eklund, set in Lowell, Massachusetts, and it goes through their trials and tribulations leading up to the inevitable last fight in a boxing movie. So, we have the uh, my co-host is to my right, I'm to your left, and we will begin with some questions and really a free-flowing conversation on the fighter. So, I think everybody, when they watch this movie, instantly thinks Christian Bale and his transformation. What did you think? I thought he, I thought he nailed it. I mean, Christian Bale's been well-known for this. I mean, uh, from The Machinist to Batman Begins, he, he loses 100 pounds, gains 100 pounds. I mean, he, he's really dedicated not just to the acting, but to the physical transformation. And the acting was pretty good, too. I mean, he really nailed down the distinctive New England accent. Like, I, I'm not even sure there's a specific New England accent, but he nailed it. <laughs> yeah, he de definitely does take it uh, to that level of, say, the method actor. You know, there were stories that he would disappear, like Dickie disappears in the movie for a period of time. Because he was staying in character. Um, Bale's getting a lot of buzz. Um, t what, tell me about his character. His character really is almost the heart of the story, I think. Uh, even more so than Melissa Leo's mother character. Mm -hmm. um, it seems his teachings, his learnings are the only ones that really get to Mark Wahlberg's Mickey Ward character. Uh, even on that, that fight he had... Uh, where he was getting killed, he remembered and reverted back to his brother's training. So when you look at a central character in the fighter, I think it has to be Dickie Eklund, and Christian Bale does almost is the lead of this movie. I know he's getting a lot of supporting actor buzz, and he's nominated for supporting actor. He is the lead actor in this category, I think. Any other comments? Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree, but I also like to think of that it is... If the movie is about Mickey Ward, who was played by Mark Wahlberg, right? Like you have to, you have to recognize that. Yeah, it's it, his story. It's but, definitely yeah. it's his story, but then there are others who control the narrative, right? There, uh, there's louder characters. His girlfriend is louder. His mother is louder. His brother is louder. Yeah. His seven sisters are louder, and those seven sisters are, I think, a revelation. I was reading that they were, most of them are unprofessional actors. Is it's really, I think, encapsulated like an 80s, 90s kind of trailer park appearance and dialect. It was really impressive on their part. I think it was very, very good casting to cast unknowns in those parts. And I think it really was one of the, the better parts of the movie. Yeah, I agree. Before, before this movie, I thought New England was filled with like fishing towns and like, like, Pilgrim reenactments. That's well, how that I think that, I think that leads into a good point. <laughs> yeah. New England um, yeah. as a movie town, really, yeah. it's really kind of emerged again. You know, with Affleck, with Damon, yeah. and now Wahlberg as almost the the third musketeer of New England as a movie town. Yeah. Why is New England or Boston? Was well, it Lowell, 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 Massachusetts? Yeah. Right. Why do they make good movie towns? I think it's because, like, uh, like we saw later in the movie when they presented the documentary, there's a lot of history there. I mean, Lowell, Massachusetts is clearly the birth of the Industrial Revolution in the U.S., right? So it's like, you get to see, this, you get to see these towns, like, just like the characters, they, their downfalls, their, when they come back, and then it's like the town kind of like reflects the characters. Right. Yeah, I do. I think New England is a very, it's a historical place. It's a place with high institu higher institutions of learning, but yet it has that working day class. It's like a Pittsburgh. It's like a Detroit. It doesn't have the glamour of an L.A. or the, the skyscrapers and the rise to the top of a New York or Chicago. So it's really, it's a town, it's a place rooted with so much heritage. It's a beautiful place, yet it has these common day stories. It has people going through these trials and tribulations. Now, I think we should obviously talk about the person who really kind of lends his story, David O. Russell. 
uh, who had worked with Mark Wahlberg in the past in Three Kings, and Mark Wahlberg, who was very much committed to this film for so long, brought him in. People are saying that he took a boxing movie, which is a very standard fixture, we've seen a lot of success, a lot of standard boxing movies, and kind of reinvented it. Do you feel it was a reinvention of the boxing movie? To a point, I think... Because it, it focuses a lot more on, like, more, like, a larger cast of characters, because it focuses on the entire family, and rather than just, like, the one fighter. So, but otherwise, to a, I, it was a bit predictable. I mean, you knew you knew he was going to win at the end, right? I mean, but it, well, that's also because well, it's based I, in a true story. Yeah, well, I, I came in unfamiliar with the, the actual boxer, so I felt yeah. there was still suspense. Okay. In the, in the scene, I thought it was suspenseful. I thought because we never were familiar with his boxing style. He was not that person who would go for the automatic KO, right? He is a survivor kind of boxer. You know, duke it out round to round to round. So I thought there was definitely a reason to be very suspenseful, and was very suspenseful. Um, I think we should move on now to the. The two supporting actresses, uh, Melissa Leo and Amy Adams. Um, I actually found the mother, Alice Ward, to not live up to my expectations. I felt it was a character that necessarily wasn't really fleshed out. Um, other than when she's with her daughters, she really, there really seems to be no reason why Dickie Acklin, Christian Bale's character, falls out of the roof. I, don't, I didn't see why he necessarily feared her, and I didn't see how she really had a even a, a managing relationship with Mickey Ward, Mark Wahlberg's character. So I thought it was a character that I think is getting a lot of praise, but I don't know if it's entirely merited. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I think it's also because a lot of things like to... A lot of movies like to focus on the parental relationships, right? And this is... And as you see, Mickey is clearly has a close relationship with his mother than his father. So obviously, I think that's why he feels like he has some sort of due to her, right? I mean, she she's the one who kind of pushed her through all the boxing. So that's why he that's why I think for the longest time until like around the middle of the movie when he totally gets killed in that fight. That's what he sticks to what his mother and by extension his brother does, right? Well, I, don't, I didn't see... I think the brother was much more influential than the mother. So I oh, thought yeah. the mother was somebody who just existed on screen but really wasn't a, a force in the narrative. I think it was a great, almost caric caricature of a strong, maybe uncorked woman in her 40s um, who's had hard times, but it really wasn't a character where I felt... Either, either evolved or was influential. Now, Amy Adams as the girlfriend Charlene. Um, I thought Amy Adams did a great job. She's really known for this fairy tale, lovable characters. She was a little more rougher, but really, I think, was. I don't know, was it was. She provided that outside perspective to that family, right? Maybe trying to get Mickey Ward to look beyond his family to see what else was there so I thought she did a good job yeah I'll agree with that it was, and it was that and it definitely grew to the point that Amy Adams uh, this is not a role that the Amy, Amy Adams play like even in even in the like the more serious role she does take you she does have like a sense of innocence to her like she she still does have it in the movie but she's like it's very like rough around the edges in this movie role yeah right uh, I guess a staple of inside the Academy Studio is our final questions, and it's almost time to do those. So, um, our first question will be: favorite moment of the fighter? Favorite moment? Hmm, it's a it's definitely overall a solid movie. So, favorite moment would have to be. Well, I have one. I, it's okay. definitely Charlene's character, played by Adams. Uh, fighting with one of the sisters on the porch. I think it was just a great scene where you had the clash of like it's almost a gang mentality, and then still you see Charlene standing up. So I thought that was my favorite moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably mine was uh, it's more a comedic moment, but you know, and Dickie gets caught by the cops or impersonating a police officer. It just shows that how 
Like, even though he might not be the most reliable brother, he shows that he's he is willing to stick out the neck for his brother and it just you know, going just go against the law from time to time. Right. Uh your least favorite moment in the fighter. Least favorite moment. Hmm. Uh, it's a movie of good moments, but I think my least favorite would probably have to be um, how they handled um, Dickie uh, coming back and talking to Charlene. I felt that was a little tampering. Uh, it's more pandering, I guess, pandering to show that Dickie was human. I just felt that. To me, it didn't feel organic in their relationship. That right out of prison, he would go to Charlene and beg. It felt like we had not seen that rehabilitation in his character. Hmm. Well, I think my least favorite scene would have to be... It's kind of similar to the scene that you kind of like, but not really... I think it was when, when the mother of uh, Mickey's child was forcing his, uh, forcing her daughter to watch the d- documentary about Dicky uh, about the uh, crack and Lowell. I thought that was kind of, I don't know. I just thought it didn't really add much to the story. Just kind of definitely, like, she was yeah. the character you could not be sympathetic toward. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> for yeah. our last question, um, we like to do word association, so. When you think the fighter, what is the first word you associate with the movie? And I'll start. I it's MTV, um, the MTV girl. Just when those sisters keep calling Amy Adams' character MTV girl, the first thing I think of, I thought it was a great moment, great word. Okay, first word I I came out of the movie was Gotti. Like, and the I think at the end of the movie when they kept on mentioning Arturo Gotti, and then afterwards I kind of did read about. The, the legendary trilogy of fights between Mickey Ward and Antero Gotti, that's kind of what I could, that's kind of what I got out of that movie. So the there's a built-in sequel right there. So yeah. MTV and Gotti were the words we thought of right away when we associate with fire. For my co-host, this has been Inside the Academy Studio with David O. Russell's The Fighter. Thank you.